Shipcare is an off-the-shelf platform, meaning that it's super simple to get started and set up and will work with minimal setup um, straight out of the box. That being said, there is a lot of customization that you can do so that you can run the business, uh, use Shiftcare to run your business the way that you see fit. And I'm gonna walk you through some of those settings today. First of all, we have the logo. You can upload your company logo that uh, will be seen in various sections of the platform. Um, here we have company details where you can put your company name. Your company country is set when you create your profile. If for whatever reason you do need to change that, you can go through uh, our support team and they can change that for you as well. Um, down here we have the carer invitation link. If you send that out to your new carers, they'll be able to sign up uh, and create a profile with Shiftcare, um, as well as be able to download the uh, Shiftcare app. Down here we have an SMS counter to let you know how many SMSs have been sent since your billing cycle. And uh, as we go further down, we have uh, notes permission. So what this means is you can turn off as an administrator the ability to edit any notes that have been left there. If you want staff to be able to edit notes, you can leave that uh, turned on um, and uh, there's an audit history of all the edits that have been made as well. Uh, here we've just got uh, hide client notes and documents to staff unscheduled for 365 days. This is something that you can change. So if they need access to it for an indefinite period of time, you can make that an indefinite number as well. Down here, we have shift types. Shift types are set at the scheduling section and they allow you to filter and differentiate between different shift types in the roster, in the schedule. You can go in here and you can create uh, custom shift types and you can tailor the colors to suit your needs. If you are using a platform such as KeyPay uh, and there needs to be an external uh, ID in there, you can also add that in there as well. Further down here, we have uh, the settings for our scheduler. Uh, so the time zone here is very important. The time zone will determine what public holidays uh, you have in your roster or in your schedule. Um, these are determined by the government mandated holidays for that particular time zone, Sydney, New South Wales, Melbourne, Victoria, etc. If you have uh, public holidays that you need to pay that aren't uh, mandated or aren't included in this list, you can come down to the bottom of the section of the settings section here and you can add in uh, public holidays. What that means is that when you have staff working on public holidays and clients that you're providing services to, if there's a public holiday pay rate that you need to pay your staff, then you will uh, be paying them correctly, as well as if there's a public holiday uh, charge or rate that you charge your client, they'll be charged correctly as well. Coming back up into the scheduler, uh, just like shift types, we have client types, then these are customizable. So the client types are set at the client profile and you can go in and you can have uh, new client types. You can customize uh, some of the ones that are in there. Um, and that's really handy for segmenting the clients that you have, especially when it comes to invoicing as well. When it comes to creating a schedule, you can set the different intervals that you schedule uh, someone for. Um, the options are one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes. One minute meaning you can schedule uh, whenever you like. Five minutes meaning it's every in five minute blocks. So uh, on the hour, five past, 10 past, etc., cetera, or um, 15 past, so uh, 15 minute intervals, i.e. on the hour, 15 minutes, half hour, etc. Um, here you can decide where your, whether your pay run is weekly and fortnightly and then what is the first day of the fortnight or what is the first day of the week. So if you pay from Wednesday to Wednesday, then you would come in here and you would set that up to say, okay, from the 13th, that's when my pay run is going to run. Here, this 
carer can manage manage uh, carer can manage shifts is a premium function so we have three uh, plans basic professional and premium this is a premium function what this means is if this is selected that any client that a carer is rostered on for can then go in and create a shift uh, for that carer for that client um, and they can manage and, and edit those what it doesn't mean is that the carer can manage or change shifts that you have rostered them on for. They can only create and manage their own shifts. So very important to know that. So that's the scheduling settings. Um, and if we move down here, we've got time and attendance. So this is to do with your staff and, and timesheet generation. So first of all, we have edit unavailability. That means that carers and admin staff can manage unavailability in the schedule uh, in the scheduler and so they can say that I don't want to work on this day this day this day or for this period of time uh, during a day um, and then if that is selected you can go ahead and select the unavailability notice period meaning that if you do your roster every fortnight you can set it to have a 15 day uh, window where they have to give you that much notice for the unavailability i.e if I want to log um, a, a day off I have to give you 15 days notice um, this is really handy for making sure no one's putting in unavailability at short notice I can change that to whatever period of time I like as well uh, clock in location check if this is selected it means that when the carer is using the mobile app to clock in and to clock out of their shift, they have to be within a one kilometer radius of that shift. Um, if this is turned off, they will be able to clock in wherever they are located. Both instances, it will keep a record of where the mobile app was when the carer clocked in and when the carer clocked out, and that would be logged against the shift as well. Attendance threshold in minutes means that if the shift is clocked in and clocked out within 15 minutes or within 20 minutes of the start and end time. You then have the ability to use the auto approve shift if clock in clock out was successful. What that means is that it will automatically approve the timesheet for that shift if all of the criteria was met. Down here, we've got timesheet precision, so you can have one or two decimals uh, on the timesheet precision. Um, the default is two. And then here we have the pay rate based on the start or end time. Um, for the things like the Shads Award, the end time is what we typically would use, but you can define that based on your business needs. Um, down here we have a clock in alert so when a staff member clocks in you can type in a company message uh, that would be seen by every staff member when they go to clock in down here we have the payroll software that shift care is set up to use for and so what you would do is select whichever payroll software you're using so i've got it set to zero but if you use myob or quickbooks or keypay you can change that when I go to change that, it changes some of the settings in the platform so that it can integrate with those uh, different softwares. Um, and there's more detailed setup uh, around that in our help center as well. Coming just back up to the top now, uh, we've got our client public information headings. So what this is, is a way for you to create uh, a custom profile to suit the clients that you serve. So in this instance, I have created uh, this template here that says need to know information, behavioral, emergency contact, example heading and medical, and then in useful information, you've got your favorite activity and then next of kin. I'm just gonna jump across to the client's profile to show you what that looks like. So if I go here, and then click on Eric and then scroll down. I have this public information here. So it allows me to build out a profile of the clients that's relevant to my business. 
all of this information is seen by all of the carers that will work with Eric. So in the mobile app, I'll be able to see all of this information here. So you can customize that. You don't have to have titles like I've got here. You could just have need to know, general and useful information. Jumping back into the settings. So this is where you would create that. If I click on manage, I can go ahead and I can add in a new heading in there as well. In the same process, you come down to notes headings, and this is where you can create custom templates for your progress notes, for your feedback or complaints, for incident reporting, and for new business inquiries as well. I've got an example of a uh, progress note template here, so you can see I've got location, activity, state of mind, etc. The red signifies that these are mandatory fields. So when a carer is logging a progress note, they have to put information into location, activities, goal update, and was there an incident. State of mind, behavior, etc. the blue titles, they're optional. So they don't need to have a title included uh, in there. If you need them all to be mandatory, you can set them all to mandatory. Going further down, uh, we have our client document categories and carer competency and qualification categories, report headings and uh, compliance KPI and other. All of these relate to document storage within the platform. So in the client and staff profiles, I can store all of the documents I need to be able to successfully manage staff and maintain um, the best possible care for my clients. All of these are customizable and you can have an unlimited number of documents stored uh, within the platform. And so if I click on edit for client categories, if for example, um, support and respite plan wasn't relevant to me, sensory report wasn't relevant to me, I can delete all of those out. Although these don't appear anywhere until there's a document stored against them. So there's no need to go through and, and delete all of those. Um, and then if you need to add a new document, you can come in here and add new document um, like that and then save. And then this will be uh, available to you in your client's document storage settings. In the same process, uh, the carer qual competencies and qualification categories, um, it's the same process there as well. So that sums up the account settings. So obviously very powerful and very customizable, but super easy to use and, um, and super intuitive. So you should be able to go in here and, um, and set up your business the way that you need. Um, if you do need support while you're doing this, obviously we have our help center where you can click on the help center articles um, and come across to here. So all of the help center, all of the settings um, have a help center article in here so you can go into more detail there um, and if you get really stuck you can speak to our support team down in the left hand side here